I mean, it's it, without being like uh, overblown about it. Like our department has a very ambitious mandate, and it is launching these service programs. Um, but to what end? It's trying to rebuild community. That's what we're trying to do um, by recruiting people, controlling for the barriers that otherwise keep people out of service programs, creating a cohort that looks like the state, so people of all different backgrounds can have that year of a shared experience. It's it's a place where people of different backgrounds come together to do something good for the state at the same time they're trying to figure out where they fit um, that's part of our mission but the other part the civic innovation part of our mission is how do you lift up and affirm service of volunteerism broadly how do you create a clearinghouse to give people other ways to serve that they weren't aware of this is my strong belief people are just as altruistic now as they were then the challenge is how do you express that desire to help when you look at ex many existing service programs, you can't really serve if you're not paid a living wage. You can't really serve if you don't have transportation or childcare or housing. And that's the challenge is I, I want to do something good. There's just no way for me to do it if I'm low income. Or I, I, I want to give back. I want to mentor young people. I, want, I just don't know how to do it because the ways or structures that used to exist are, are not there anymore. Uh, and so I, I don't know where to plug in. And I think with our department, and it's not going to be a blueprint that we come up with, it's going to be working with local communities to say, hey, you're a retiree on the sidelines. How do you want to give back? Yeah, there's a third-party evaluation baked into our agency, as there should be, because this is a significant investment of public money. Um, so in 2028, we have to report to the General Assembly on some key indicators. What happened to these people? How many went into state or local government? How many went into higher education or further their education? How many went into apprenticeship programs? How many went into military service? How many went into other service programs, Peace Corps, AmeriCorps? So looking at not just what you did for the year you were with us, which is great, but what happens to you three years from now? I'm a big fan of the Margaret Mead quote of never doubt that a committed group of individuals will change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And this cadre of people, you know, we're in a pilot year of about a little more than 250 people. But we grow every year. But in a state of 6 million folks, if we're churning out hundreds of people who have hard and soft skills, who have some degree of financial literacy they didn't have before, who have some degree of civic literacy they didn't have before, and are connected to caring, responsible adults who they didn't know before, and they stay in touch with one another, that's a community of its own. And if we're pulling from every part of the state, these are people that are planted where they are, they're not moving to Delaware or West Virginia or Pennsylvania. They're st deciding to stay here, go to school here, start a business here, take a job here, enter an apprenticeship in Maryland. That makes the state more competitive. And the program, it's one program with two streams. One of the streams is the service year option. That's for recent high school completers who've graduated GED, traditional diploma, or certificate of completion, but they've graduated without a plan. They do a full-time year service. They're paired with an on-site mentor. They're given regular professional development each week, um, about 10 hours each week, everything from financial literacy to professional dress, communication. Um, and if they finish the term with us, they earn a $6,000 completion award. That can be used toward tuition if they're going on to an apprenticeship or college or university, or they can take it as a taxable stipend get their, a lump sum to get their first apartment, used car, start their life. The Maryland Corps is a very similar program without the age or educational requirements. So if you're over 18, you can do the Maryland Corps. And it's also full year, a uh, full-time commitment. Um, you can serve just like a service option member at a nonprofit, for-profit, public agency. Um, but these are people that may be older, um, that because of a layoff or because of a I, I just can't, I'm burned out of this. I want to do something. I want to pivot. Um, but the benefits are the same. And, and uh, we have 30, 40, 50 year olds who are looking to pivot. And, and so um, the Maryland Corps is open to them. And they're eligible again. Everyone's paid at least $15 an hour. And they're eligible for the $6,000 completion award at the end. The host site employers are the actual employers. So our members are employees of these organizations. We stretch our precious general funds as much as we can 
by having employers that are large employers put skin in the game, where they're investing so it's not fully public money subsidizing this. And, and we do that because we have to, to stretch our dollars and to preserve the ability of smaller employers who say, I would love to do this and host some of these folks at my organization, my nonprofit, more, my for-profit, my newspaper, but I can't afford to pay them. And the experience is such that that's the valuable thing to the state in key industries where we would say we would put skin in the game to make it possible so our members can have that experience in these key sectors. The application to serve in the program, either as an employer or as a member, the employer deadline is April 1st. The best place to go is serve.maryland.gov, and Maryland's spelled out, so serve.maryland.gov. That's where you can find more information about the programs themselves, um, if you want to consider serving in it or being a potential employer host in it, um, but also uh, service opportunities. Um, we we want to, again, be, if we're the Department of Service and Civic Innovation, we want to be a, a, a clearinghouse of sorts for uh, connecting people to local opportunities to build up their own communities. So.